Welcome to Lesson 31, where we're going to graduate from intermediate to advanced topics. Congratulations if you've gotten this far. The first advanced topic that I want to talk about is actually strings. You say, but Chuck, we covered strings in episodes 6, 7, and 8. If you didn't watch those, I encourage you to go back, get a refresher, and learn about strings. Strings have a number of built-in properties that we can take advantage of. So again, lessons 6, 7, and 8, if you didn't already watch them, very easy to digest. We're going to look at some of those more advanced things we can do with strings with some examples. So let's dive right in. And the first one I want to show you is called index of. Now, index of get the right script up here, allows us to say, is this substring in another substring? And give me the index of that. So here I have a subject that says, warning, email is not working. And I want to know if the word email is found in there. Obviously, as a human, I can look at that and go, yep, it is. But the computer, we need to tell it how it's done. So index of takes the string variable and you put on this dot and it says, go use this built-in function called index of and say, is this email string in there? Now, that could be a literal string. It could be a variable. It could be a parameter from a function. It doesn't matter to me. However you get that in there is up to you. And it will return a numeric integer value of where it was found. In this case, it says, what is that, about nine? Nine. So, Email is found at position nine. Now, the key to remember is that it starts like an array. Warning is warning in there. Warning is found at zero. It's where did that whole string start? Starts at zero. We say, well, if it's zero, how do I know if it's not found? Let's go back and put in a string that is not found in there. I'm going to say Chuck, and Chuck is not found. It returns a negative one as the position. Knowing that, we can now determine if a substring is found in another substring. Why is this helpful? Again, you saw, can I, is this keyword in a subject? Is it anywhere in the text of this message? Is it on a line in here? We can do a lot of parsing. And I can combine that to say, here's my short description again. System is displaying an error message. Is the word error in here? So I've got short description as my variable name. Index of is going to find out if this error, error string, is in this short description somewhere, which it is. And I don't need to save the position because I can just use it as it is. It's going to say, I ran this, I got a nine, I got a 10, I got a three, I got a zero. If it's greater than or equal to zero, because remember, if it's not found, it's going to return a minus one. That's a different condition. Then it says, error message found. Okay, Chuck, what if you want to say it wasn't found, and I put in your name again. It's going to say nothing because I don't have an else on here. Let's put an else on there that says else gs.info error not found. Very generic but useful message. Print that back and say, no, there was no error message. You just said go find Chuck in this substring. You can do a lot of parsing and positioning and determining, does this contain? You may get an email into the system and say, is this keyword? That's how your approvals work. When you send an approval to ServiceNow as an email, it says, is the word approve or reject anywhere in the subject of this message or subject in the subject text? If it is, I'm going to approve or run the approval process or save that record, whatever it does for that. The other thing I want to talk to you about is getting a substring. You could actually pull out the text of another substring, of, of a string from within a string and make your new string. That's done. I can get the position with index of, and then I can use this substring method to say, go and get that piece. It has a starting position, which I know where it starts because I can use index of to tell me where it starts, and the ending position. So I'm going to take the position that it starts and then 11 characters because I counted. There's seven in the digit. There's four in the label. So my number is for request items is always 11 digits. And then I'll print that out. So I'm using a combination of index of to get the position and then substring to pull out 11 characters starting at that position. And there it is. Substring is very, very helpful. The other one is noting that Case matters when you're comparing strings. 
So if I have, say, a first name and a login name, my first name is Chuck, my login is Chuck, and I simply compare those two. If login name equals first name, then the names match. What if I try running that and it says, oh, you silly boy, they don't match. One is uppercase and one is lowercase. String comparisons for equality are always case sensitive. Okay, Don't get that confused with some of the other operations that are not in service now. So this is a pure JavaScript thing right now. So strings are case sensitive. How do I get around that? Well, I can use a method called to uppercase or to lowercase to take them both and convert them to the same case. So if I take first name and last name and say, convert this to uppercase, convert this to lowercase, and then compare those, I would get an equality match that says, hey, look, I made them both uppercase. Now they match. Okay, If I did not have an exact match and I could say, how about now? Do they still match? Yes, because they're both being converted to uppercase. What about Mary and Chuck? Those don't match. Okay. If you're doing some sort of login processing or you know, where you say, hey, logins aren't case sensitive, this is how it's done behind the scenes. We're converting them either both to uppercase or both to lowercase. So believe that is all the examples I have for those. I've got a couple more. Do I have a couple more in the next episode? No, I've got another advanced topic that I want to talk to you about. So join me there. See you soon.